Okay, welcome to this video where I'm going to be giving you a tutorial on how to make money with MCPs. Now that might seem like a bit of a weird concept, but I just want to talk about a few things. For me, there are three different types of MCP. There's API replacement, like Stripe, Superbase, etc., or CLI replacement, you could also say. There's behavioral MCPs, like the Taskmaster MCP. I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with this. And then there's the kind of most important ones that we're going to be talking about today, which are knowledge MCPs. Now, you may be familiar with Context 7, but you might not be familiar with the Shopify MCP. So if I just go onto the Shopify dev MCP server here, so connect your AI assist assistant to Shopify's development resources. The Shopify dev model context protocol serves, server enables your AI assistant to search Shopify docs, explore API schemas, build functions, and get up to date about Shopify APIs. Now this is the important type, right? These knowledge MCPs are where the real money is in my opinion. Now I'm sure you can find other MCPs like this, but yeah, I'm just going to be, be mainly talking about the Shopify MCP. If you don't know, the Shopify MCP is how I built Grove, okay? I always had the Shopify MCP and every single time I tried to make a new feature like the collection generator, the blog generator, whatever, I used the Shopify MCP as a base in order to help my Claude code understand what the hell was going on. So you can actually use knowledge MCPs to build tools that serve a niche and then sell that as a service or as a software, right? So you don't necessarily have to sell a SaaS. What you could do is you could have Fiverr gigs, Upwork gigs, whatever, where you say that you will build automations for business owners on Shopify. Now, Grove, by the way, if you want to join the waitlist, this is kind of, I, we, we've extended it a little bit just because we want a few more people on the waitlist and, you know, the offer is really, really good. It's $99 a month for three months and then that rolls over to $499 a month, as you can see here. But we're currently giving people a huge discount. So if you're interested, if you're on Shopify or if you're on WordPress, then it will also do WordPress soon and it's worth getting good deal that we're offering that'll be the first link in the description or the pinned comment so how does this actually work how to make money with mcps so let's just set this up real quick so mkd shopify mcp cd shopify mcp and then let's just add the mcp server here okay so in order to add the mcp what you want to do is you want to go to the playwright mcp right on github and just grab this command and then grab the json for the server that you want to add and then put it put them both in chat GPT and then watch if I run this. Now if I run Claude and I'll say yes and then run slash MCP, this should connect properly. Let's just wait. Oh it failed. Okay, so I just had to run a oh, reset there and just asked Chat GPT to fix it for me. So you can see here now that the Shopify dev MCP is connected, right? So what we can actually do is we can say, how can I build a Python script that connects to my Shopify store through a custom pack token and then updates the title and description. Use the Shopify dev MCP. Now these are actually my favorite types of MCPs. I don't actually rate context seven and now that they've added an API key, I think it's a complete waste of time. However, if you can find a development MCP that gives you documentation, you can basically use Claude Code to rewrite that documentation into whatever the hell you want, right? So you can see here it's doing, um, it's checking how to do personal access token, PAT authentication, Python GraphQL, and then it's doing update prompts, title description, GraphQL mutation. So that was too big, so let's just use pagination. So there we go. So if I just do control R here, you'll see that it actually gets all of the code that it would need in order to do whatever the hell you want it to do, which is exactly what we want. So now it's gonna create a Python script with pro proper authentication and GraphQL mutations. And that's where the beauty of this entire process starts to come into play. You're not coding where you have to go on Google, right? Search uh, Shopify graph, QL admin API, go on their documentation. And then like, you know, you don't have to look for, what is it, products and collections, queries, right, blogs count, all this shit. You'd have to do this individually page, one page at a time. 
Instead, what you can now do is you can use documentation MCPs to do this for you. So another one that is very, very useful for you is obviously the Stripe MCP. Now, most people use the Stripe MCP to talk to their Stripe account, right? But I actually think that's a mistake. What I do instead is if I want to talk to my Stripe account, I use what is known as the Stripe CLI, which is their own uh, terminal tool, right? But I don't use it, obviously. I, I tell Claude Code, oh, can you check my Stripe account? Can you see how many payments failed? Or, for example, another thing I did is I used the Stripe CLI to attach customer IDs to the correct customer, right? And I just, it basically just created a Python script after doing some research on my Stripe customers and worked out which ones needed that and how to do it, created a Python script, pushed it to main, and then I basically just ran that script on the console of my project, right? So you don't actually need the Stripe MCP to talk to Stripe. It's the same with Superbase. You don't need the Stripe, you don't need the Superbase CLI, uh, you don't need the Superbase MCP to talk to Superbase, right? What you should do instead is you should have the Superbase uh, CLI set up so that Claude Code can itself, without the MCP, talk to Superbase by using the CLI. And then if it needs documentation or whatever, in this case, you might have to use Context7. I'm not sure if Superbase actually has a documentation part of their MCP. But you can see what it says here. The Stripe MCP server defines a set of tools that AI agents can use to interact with the Stripe API and search our knowledge base, including documentation and support articles. So I had a thing where I wanted to allow people to use a Stripe link on the website. And when they click that, it automatically had a discount code in the URL and also was a subscription, right? But I didn't know this, but my Claude code did the research and found out that you cannot have Stripe links for subscriptions. I think it was, I can't remember exactly what it was. It might not have been exactly that, but it was something like that, right? I can't exactly remember what, but... And then what we basically did was instead of using Stripe links, we created a Stripe like webhook system and Stripe webhooks are actually much better because they can, you know, they can look for cancellations. They can look for uh, people asking for refunds. They can do all these different things. Right. And this wouldn't have really been possible for me to work out myself because I just didn't know. So luckily the model, the MCP for Stripe came in clutch. And Claude Code was able to do the research needed to understand that the reason that it wasn't working was because I actually needed to use um, webhooks instead of links. So these have helped me twice in the creation of SEO Grove. Now, let me just talk a little bit about SEO Grove. I'm not going to show numbers on the screen just because I kind of don't like people pocket watching me. Also, something that a lot of people don't understand is like, yeah, my school has 200 members, right? And it's 49 a month. So a lot of people just think that every single month I just get 10K in my bank account and I'm just living happy, happy as Larry, right? I just want people to understand that's not the case, right? There is 10K, right? I'm not denying that there is $10,000 a month here, but a lot of this money goes to employees. Like I just pay myself a salary. You guys have to understand this. I'm not just taking all this money and sitting on a pot of gold in Ireland, right? That's just not the case at all. I have a business and, you know, we have a lot of business expenses and basically everything that I have or everything I make goes into the business and then I pay myself a salary, right? So I don't want, I, it, it is my business. I don't want people to think it's not my business either, but like, I just don't like this pocket watching where like I saw this comment of someone like, doing all these calculations to see how much money I had in my bank and stuff. And it's just like, what the actual, what, what the hell, right? So I'm not going to show numbers on this because I don't want even more pocket watching, right? But I just want people to know that I'm a bit, I'm a business. I'm not an individual, right? We have employees. We pay a shitload every month out to employees. We have like 15 to 20 employees. Okay. So just remember that, please don't, don't just think that I'm, I don't know king of the castle, enjoying retirement life or something, because that's just not the case. Anyway, SEO Grove, right? It, I'm not going to say exact numbers, right? I'll, I'll just go off current numbers according to the amount of people are paying now, right? So we're doing at least 5,000 a month, okay? It's probably more than that, 
but at the moment we can pretty much confirm that it's doing 5,000 a month, okay? And this is all because of the Shopify MCP, the Stripe MCP, the Superbase CLI, Claude Code for coding, right? Opus 4.1 mainly, the Playwright MCP, right? These are the things that I have used to make SEO grow, okay? And the cost is very, very low. The cost of Claude Code is the only thing that we really have to consider, maybe Superbase as well. And that's only 200 a month, right? And then we have DigitalOcean, actually, that's another important one. DigitalOcean MCP, DigitalOcean MCP. This is a huge one, actually, because it means that you can basically launch a website without really needing to know about how to launch a website properly, right? Oh, and then obviously the GitHub CLI. This is my entire stack, right? For everything I do, this is what I use. Oh, there's also Uptash, right? So Uptash MCP, Uptash. So if you're wondering, like my entire stack, it's right here. And Stripe and Shopify, these two here are both documentation MCPs, or that's how I use them anyway. You could use Stripe MCP to interact with your database or whatever, but like I said before, it's not really needed. You can just use the CLI or get Claude Code to use the CLI itself. So this is how I have managed to, to make this right every month is because of these MCPs right here. All of them, but like the only two that like are absolutely needed, in my opinion, are the documentation MCPs. The rest of them, you could get away without using them. Obviously, Playwright is very, very useful. Superbase CLI is infinitely useful. And I would recommend using all of these if you're trying to build a application or if you're trying to build an automation or whatever it might be. Okay, so we can see here, you can see that this is now finished. Let's just have a look at this. So um, you can see that it's got everything it needs, right? So Shopify access token, this is just from um, your custom plugin that you add, right? And then get product details by ID. Okay, beautiful. Good, good, good. And then update product title. So you can just see how it, it's coding without doubt, right? None of these GraphQLs, things will be made up, they'll all be proper, they'll all be correct, and everything that you need to do whatever you know, whatever you want to do is here. Now, there are so many things that you can actually do with this documentation. There are literally hundreds, there are probably thousands, tens of thousands of calls, here, maybe thousands, of different GraphQL calls that you can do in order to control a Shopify website. So basically what I'm doing is I'm taking the Shopify documentation and I'm turn I'm like reverse engineering it into a SaaS, right? I think I'll leave the video there, guys. I just want to talk about this briefly. Um, I think documentation MCP is a huge. Like I said before, I'm not actually a big fan of Context Seven. I don't recommend it, especially now that they've added an API key. I just think that's absolute bullshit. And if they're charging people money, that's ridiculous because it's not even a good service. But yeah, I'll leave the video there, guys. Thanks so much for watching. If you're watching all the way to the end of the video, as usual, you're an absolute legend, and I'll see you very, very soon with some more content. Peace out.